very good morning to you karibu back to y254 tv this is why in the morning hashtag wcw and strength of a woman where we get to celebrate women and highlight what they're doing in the society this week's uh, strength of a woman we get to highlight sharon jepchichi who is a civil engineer and thriving in the male dominated arena Karibu sana, Sharon. Asante sana. It's good to have you. Good to have you it's too. Been, it's very cold. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it is cold. Where? <laughs> and it's raining outside here. It's raining? Yeah, it is. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sometimes to kick up and then you had to join you because of the soundproof studios. So you... Ah, it's, a, it's a lot, but thank you for making time. Coming from the farming community, <laughs> we are grateful for the rain. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. some of us are afraid of rain. I know. Yeah. It's understandable. So it's okay. So who is Sharon? Well, uh, first, my name is Sharon Jepchipshir. Sharon is a young, jubilant and vibrant youth in the society. I'm a civil engineer, calm politician, and uh, I am an uh, I'm part of an action group called uh, Community Outreach and uh, Action Development, Quad Kenya, which is uh, a group which we tend to do a lot of mentoring, a lot of uh, tree planting, the green economy, and generally anything that is upcoming in the society. Definitely, we normally have a lot of things that emerge. So we, we cultivate and... Uh, take in anything that will be beneficial to the society yeah let's just start right from the top like let's just r hit it right yes um the bull's eye H how did you end up at civil engineering i mean if if uh if we go by um the common myths yeah. in the society that yes. women can't do these things women can't be architects they can't be civil engineers da, 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 da. so you're in that field how did you end up there yeah so you find uh, most male dominated spaces are finance engineering construction uh, medicine and uh, others even politics so starting from where i stand in i'm in two male dominated spaces mm -hmm. First is the civil engineering part, famously known as construction or Tom Django. And uh, the second is the politica political part. I'll start with the civil engineering part. So um, growing up, civil engineering was not really one of my dreams. I wanted to be a pediatrician. But along the way, I I started developing the, the passion for civil engineering, the construction part, the architectural part. And uh, to be honest, I was among the few girls. We were, I think, five girls in our class, which tells you that it, uh, by the time we were doing this course, not so many ladies, till now, not so many ladies have ventured into this course. So uh, civil engineering, yeah, it's tough. Being an arena where we, there are so many men, uh, we are out there and you might end up maybe you're one of their leaders but now you're leading men there's so many challenges but before we reach there yeah i got into it through friends who who did the things that i did but they're male yeah wow yeah now politics area <laughs> i'm a leader in, in, i'm a leader since way back primary school mm. Uh, growing up, I've been on the forefront of each and everything that uh, students do. Class prefect, talk and noise makers, to grow up, uh, high school, forefront leadership also, scouting, class representations, uh, community representations. In uh, back at home, I'm, I'm, leader, I'm a leader in several groups, youth groups that is. And uh, politics has been of interest, and I actually vied for MCA in the recent, oh, wow. yeah, in the recent concluded uh, elections, and I was the only lady amongst uh, four men. Yes. So, yeah. Where? 
<laughs> you dumbfounded? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 what do I want to say next that I'm like yeah I know Th that's a lot that's quite a lot you do that's yeah quite it a is lot it is it is it is but it was quite fun though came with a lot of challenges if I if I may I highlight some you find uh <laughs> wow women in politics women I salute all women in politics the likes of Kina Bosholi Sabina Chege, we saw yesterday that she yeah. was appointed and yeah. you saw how she has risen mm -hmm. from, uh, she was a nominated uh, MP then along the way, chief, chief whip. She's risen after letters. Yeah, and all the spaces she's been in are male dominated. And we've seen them being bashed here and there as they rise, but regardless, they fought for what they believed in. So me being in this space also, I encountered a lot of challenges. Challenge number one for women, especially young women in, uh, in this political era, we tend to get the, the aspect of who will marry you now that you're in the limelight. Mm. But uh, regardless, we, we f I fight. I fight to let people know that uh, there are so many misconceptions and uh, so many, uh, what's the word? So many uh, things are that surround politics and women, in po spe specifically women in politics, that isn't true. You find uh, we're just leaders, like any other leader, like any other person who's in any departmental leadership, only there that we are women. So with the sense that uh, while at it, uh, we tend to fight for women's rights maybe. Mm -hmm. We fight for community uh, proactiveness. We fight for what we believe in mm -hmm. as a lady. I believe that as a lady I am equally, uh, equally mm -hmm. as that man who can rise and uh, be, do whatever. Mm -hmm. So, So what are some of the challenges mm -hmm. you have experienced mm -hmm. um, in those areas you've, you've, you've been thriving in? So in civil engineering, the biggest challenge I've been experiencing, uh, I have been a site supervisor for quite some time before I left and did some other things. Like, and um, uh, sorry, site supervisor is like, wale we uko kwa site, una supervise watu wa kijenga. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah, oh. construction site supervisor. Nice. So while at it, you find uh, we call them operatives. You call them what mm. Those people barely take directions or instructions from female, especially while when you're young and they are older than oh, you. Wow, it's tough, but you have to to believe in uh, yourself first. Believe I can do this. Then secondly, be affirmative. Know that this is one what I want to pass it to you. No one and believe that uh, if if I've said this, your no should be a no, your yes should be a, a yes. Stand on your ground, and uh, uh, possess possess that leadership qualities, whereby uh, if you just walk in, be yourself each and every time. You don't have to impress anyone. You see, when you walk in today and. Uh, be grace every day be grace every day be grace you don't have to to do whatever i want you to do mm -hmm. so you find along the way i will fall into your path so um, it takes time for you to calculate that into them but eventually they fall into place secondly in uh, in this other field uh, the biggest challenges i encounter is uh, you see, the society has this uh, passiveness where women cannot sit in male spaces. For example, if men are having a baraza, for instance, mm. we all know that uh, a lady is maybe supposed to come serve and go, come maybe take directions and go. But now we find I'm in a space where I'm supposed to sit amid East men, amid East older people. So you find the men might even ask you, are you married? Oh, wow, really? Yeah, they will. Are huh? you married? I'm like, no, I'm not married. 
So they'll tell you, so why, why are you here? Really? Yeah. What does my status have to do with? But that is the challenges we undergo out there. Oh, wow. Yes. You have to be married maybe to be in these spaces. And if, if at all you're married, I have a friend who's married and is in politics. They tell you we don't want people's wife here. Oh, wow. So what do you want? <laughs> they don't want women. So we try our best mm. to fight for our spaces there. And uh, if you've seen women who are in these higher positions, they might have done uh, quite a number of uh, things quite a number of uh, achievements, but they are not seen. But if a man comes today and just does something shoddy, it will be seen. Or if you, you as a lady does something, this other person as a man does something which is similar, the man's effectiveness will be so impactful more than the women's uh, activity or project. So with that, you find we tend so much to show off the manner you find we as ladies to not try to force things in your morning to one cane, you get. We are trying our best to be seen. So if we would have spaces where the female and the male were just on a certain bar where it doesn't matter who you are or what gender you are, it would be nice. But women are thriving out here, believe me you, they are. And um, I don't know if you've noticed this, so many women right now are being appointed in lucrative positions, talk of, uh, talk of uh, chief executive officers, uh, managing directors, even uh, small, small positions that we've seen male being given those positions, now women are thriving in, that, in, in them. What do you think this is? It's because we as women, when we are given or subjected uh, a project or an activity, we do it to our utter best. Our, we do it to perfection, unlike when it is given to a man. Yeah. You had, you had, you had given the story of how you ended up as a civil engineer. Yeah. Probably do a recap on what is civil engineering about. You know, probably I'm assuming that I understand, and there's someone out there who doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. So civil engineering, it's called, it's civil and structural engineering. So civil and structural engineering is basically uh, construction. And in this construction, we do both. We do road construction, building construction, bridges, airports, anything that entails constructions. It also covers the architecture part, the survey part. Yeah, that is civil engineering. Amazing. Dams. Oh. Yeah. That's why they say after God it's a civil engineer. Oh, wow. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> given that you had already given us the story of how you ended up as a civil engineer, um, and you've told us what you are doing uh, as, as, um, as of now, site, supervi site supervision, yeah. how is it like? It is enjoyable. It is fun. With the sense that uh, today you've been presented with a, I, I'll call it a drawing. It is an architectural drawing. So normally people get to see the 3D part of it. You just see, ah, hey, nyumba imechorwa vizuri. But now it entails a lot of things. So when you give it, I think you've seen the, the layout, how detailed it is. Then you go to the site. This is just bare land shrubs and everything but with this piece of land and shrubs and all that you're supposed to create a life uh, civil engineering we have uh, dead loads and live loads so f we work so much on the dead loads so i'm supposed to create uh, a building out of this and I'm, it's supposed to come out as precise and exact and accurate as it is on the plan so Executing that from scratch to the last finish part is the most enjoyable part. The most enjoyable part. Then seeing how your, your operatives, your co-workers beat deadlines, how you bring together your brains to just see to it that this client is satisfied. 
It's so much injury. So you, um, the architectures draw a plan? Yes. You actualize the plan? Yes. Do you, draw, do you like, do you find in a civil engineers that draw plans? Yeah. Civil engineering is basically an umbrella of all these other architectural survey. Uh, we have the quantity surveyors. We can, we can do all of them, but you see you can't be jack of all trades at the same time. So you have to, you have to just find your niche, see what you're best at and uh, perfect on it. Then once you give, uh, if, if, if your niche is uh, architectural drawing, you will now perfect that and you will work with someone else. Now you won't, you can't come do this, do that, do that, it won't, it won't go well. So some, you have to work with other people. So how many years did you school? Uh, 2017 20, 2021, yes. So four that's, years. That's four? Yeah, four years. Yes. I thought people stay longer in school. So uh, I've done two courses. Mm -hmm. I've done computer science, which I never finished. <laughs> then I, I jumped into civil engineering. I started from the diploma level. And uh, now I'm in second year in uh, the degree level so diploma took you four years yes because of covid and all that mm -hmm. yeah so how long do you expect the degree to take you three more years so that's like five, five years. years it takes five years yes oh, wow. are you in any of the bodies like um you see the way we have and um, for us in media we have mck mm -hmm. blah 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 so are you in any are you in any of those bodies? So in engineering, we have Engineers Board of Kenya, which is uh, which uh, a civil engineer preferably will fall under. We have others like the quant uh, Quantitative Surveyors Board of Kenya. And uh, so me, I'll fall into the Engineers Board of Kenya. But unfortunately, in Kenya, to, to, to get the Engineers Board of Kenya certification, you have to have a degree. So if you have a diploma, higher diploma, you can't acquire that certification. You must have a degree to get that Engineers Board of Kenya certification. By the moment, I'm registered with the National Construction Authority. Uh, yeah. National Construction Authority? The NCA, yes. What does that do? National Construction Authority uh, supervises all constructions in Kenya. They never went for proper inspection. But now they register people as contractors. So I'm, a regist I'm registered as a contractor. At the same time, I'm, I'm registered as a site supervisor. Um, let me ask you just a curious question that has come to my mind. Yes, sure. When a building collapses, now that you've mentioned it, when mm -hmm. a building collapses, who, who, who do we blame? Because for us, we will start saying, oh, when you jenga hii nyumba, oh, mwenye hii nyumba pia yeye ni mbaya, you know? Mm -hmm. So when a building now, from a professional point of view, when a building collapses, who's to blame? Uh, this is a 50-50 question. I'll talk on both ends. Sometimes, uh, I'll, I'll start with the village, or let me say the, the, the client perspective. Sometimes a client goes to, uh, co um, what do you call uh, an architectural uh, engineer goes to the architect, requests for a plan. After being given the plan, anenda anasema anatafta fundi ule mchip. So akenda kitafta fundi mchip and Kenya being Kenya, wanapata permit through backdoors. So he anenda anapata permits zake and he's good to go. Anenda anapata fundi wake mchip, he goes does his construction and two years or even months down the line, the building col collapses. And why does it collapse? Because it hasn't met some certain requirements. You find when we are doing construction, we have to do a lot of tests. We have to do tests of the soil. We have to do tests of the concrete. A lot of tests are done to certify or make sure that it is up to standards. On this other end, uh, sometimes the National Construction Authority are just negligent. 
with the sense that umona inyewe, this building is not up to bar, but you still go, go ahead and certify them. You, they don't do regular checkups. They don't do regular, um, they don't follow up. You, I know you now as Grace, you know me as Sharon. You come to my office. Ah, simi najua Grace, si lazima niende kwa ground yake ku confirm if the building is going on well. So I just leave you do your things and off you go. But look at it uh, at this perspective. I'll, uh, have you ever seen uh, these people? Uh, I'll use the Indians for instance. Have you ever seen any Indian building collapsing? I'm sorry to use that, but have you ever heard of any Indian, Indian owned building collapsing? Really? Because these people, they, they follow all protocols. All protocols. And can we say this is because uh, they are foreign in our country, so since they, they are foreign, they follow all the steps that the government has outlined. Then us, since we know who we know, Kujuana, we tend to do our shoddy work. Could we say that is the reason? I don't know. So what's the biggest <coughs> project you've done so far? Uh, the biggest project, uh, I've done some buildings in Eldoret. And uh, at the moment, I was attached to a certain building. I've been doing survey work in Westlands here. It's coming up right well. So very soon, you'll see the work here. Okay. So you've added the aspect of survey yeah. into engineering. Yeah. Do you mind shedding some light into survey? Survey, we have land survey, we have uh, quantity survey, we have, survey is a very broad area. But <coughs> in a layman's language, survey to nikupima shamba ama to make sure, to make sure that this table is flat. Or to make sure that a certain inclination has been achieved. So you find, uh, like in the roads, on the roads, we have, you, we have the bumps, we have the alignment of the road. In the buildings, we have, normally you find uh, the flow of the, when you pour water, water flows at a, a certain mm -hmm. direction. So basically, survey was just involved there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, what do you think is the greatest <coughs> impediment for women to getting into these male-dominated spaces? Come up again. Uh, what do you think is the greatest challenge for women mm -hmm. to <coughs> get into these male dominated spaces? Uh, I think the biggest challenge is uh, you find most women to start off have been perceived to be housewives, secretaries, and uh, maybe these English teachers. I'm not saying those are bad. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that is, I can say, female dominated spaces are uh, the receptionist and all that. So, starting from way back in primary school, you find when we were growing up, we are told, not even told, you find the teacher beating a boy because uh, the boy has failed sciences. But a girl who has failed sciences won't be beaten. Reason being, women kijana ofai kwanguka, science. Women in China ofai kwanguka, English. You see, it's, it starts from there. Then, uh, progressing, you find uh, women tend to, there is, a, can I say, career segregation, mm -hmm. whereby we've been perceived that women can do this and cannot do this. Male can do better in this and cannot do this. So, while, while someone is growing up, ashaji diminish that I can't do this. So, the biggest challenge is, I think, we need a lot of mentorship and uh, a lot of guidance to both genders, women and men, but women sana sana. So that as growing up, you know, I can do this. I can, I can be whatever a man is. I can step in wherever I want to be. Then once you've grown up, we need also to, to teach women to be bold enough, to walk tall. You can do anything that you want. 
you can be whatever you want only that you need to to walk in there with the fact that uh, you will face a lot of challenges you will face maybe sexual harassment you will face uh, discrimination from the male counterparts you will be uh, belittled but regardless you should know what you want you should stand tall and find a mentor find someone who can see you through whatever you're doing yeah um, let's take this conversation a different direction a bit okay when we started you mentioned that you do mentorship and uh, a couple of community development uh, projects yeah uh, please tell, talk to us about that so at uh, I mentioned about Coad Kenya. Coad Kenya is community outreach for action and development. So at Coad Kenya, we, we, we mentor girls. We've been mentoring several schools and uh, we mentor women in, in the community. There's this space that has been, as we venture into agriculture, you find uh, beekeeping. Who does beekeeping, if I may ask you? <laughs> <laughs> so men have been perceived to be the only people who do beekeeping. But now with COAD, we are trying to tell women you can also do beekeeping. And uh, beekeeping is a, a very nice farming activity. And we are really championing for women to venture into beekeeping using the modern methods. Uh, at COAD Kenya also, we are mentoring at the moment, Kenya is on the green uh, campaign. And we've been doing the green campaign since way back the existence of Quad. So with Quad, we've been doing planting trees with organizations, with schools, with youth, with community. And we've done a lot across the country. Yeah. So we've been working with also the green MP. <laughs> and we've seen her thriving so much. She might be our next Wangari mm, Madai. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. um, how did you end up at beekeeping? I mean, it's, it's very, it's not one of those things people do. You know, we, we're used to seeing people do sanitary towels with women, but now here you are doing something quite different. So how did you, why beekeeping? Uh, you find, yes, we do also the sanitary part. Uh, and a lot of uh, menstrual health training with the girls in several girls' schools. But now you find, uh, especially, let me, let me go back to the village, El Gio Marakwet County and Wazengisho County. But now El Gio Marakwet County, there are so many forests there and uh, there's, it, it, it's, it's a bountiful county where we have, we're very rich and uh, women need to venture into an economical space. They just don't need to sit down. And most of them there, not only do they do farming, they need something else that they can, they, they can earn from. So having seen beekeeping as a, a, a thriving and emerging thing, at the moment, Kenya, we've not so much embraced beekeeping, unlike Tanzania. Tanzania is really coming up with bee, beekeeping and uh, women championship. So we saw to it that since no one is doing that, no one is educating women in our society that uh, men no longer need to do this bee, beekeeping only because it was perceived that it should be placed high up in the trees or high places. We can just do it in a modern way and from it we can harvest a lot and from the Beehives, we get a lot of, uh, maybe after harvesting the honey, we can regenerate something out of the, what do we call, <laughs> the honeycombs, yes, economically. So how many women have you so far mentored? Uh, we've mentored quite a number of women, because we move with, uh, there are these women groups in every community. So we approach the groups because it's easy to work with groups than to work with individuals. So several groups across all the, 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 the two counties, El Gio Marakwet and Wazengishu County. Um, 
right now the focus is just in El Geo Marraquet and Wasingishu or you're looking forward to expanding it to other counties? What does the map really look like? Uh, with COD, with, uh, we have several aspects. So with uh, student mentorship, it's across Kenya. Uh, with uh, tree growing, it's across Kenya also. But with now farming, it's so much concentrated on El Geo Marraquet and Wazengishu County. Yeah. Okay. So um, about tree planting, the yeah. president has been really out there on go green, yeah. you know, green camping and all that. Yeah. And he's been saying there's a number of trees he's, he's been looking forward to planting. How many have you so far done? And are you working with any other bodies, like maybe the government bodies or other NGOs? Yes, 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 yes. So at the moment, uh, this year so far, we planted, uh, I think, more than 10,000 trees. And we're looking forward to plant even more. Uh, we are working, we are looking forward to work with schools and organizations and also communities. So we want to, we want to really try and teach everyone to embrace the green economy. Our, our forests are dying. So you find like in El Geo Marraquet, we have 42, 47 catchment areas and uh, they are all at stake of uh, dying. So the only way we can do that is through COD. We are championing, we are working with the uh, counties, we are working with NGOs. We are actually calling also for other people to come through, even individual best volunteers, to come through and to see to it that we really meet the 10 or more percent of the forest cover by 2024. Okay, yeah. then um, that brings me to this to this question, yeah? Mm -hmm. It's going to sound, okay, I don't know how it's going to sound, <laughs> it's okay. but let, let me just say it. How do you think tree planting is helping women? Like, um, in, let me just maybe explain mm -hmm. the way you've said, you see, beekeeping mm -hmm. gives them a source of income. Yeah. So how does tree planting help them, women you are working with? Okay. So you find uh, with uh, the groups that we've approached, we economically they are earning from the tree nurseries. They are, th we've given them seedlings so that they can, they can start off. And also we are teaching them on how to come up with seedlings for their nurseries. So from there, they grow their nurseries, we buy the trees from them. Mm. So you find uh, when, they, when they have their nurseries, we come buy from them, they earn from them, and also at the same time, they help us, uh, not, not, uh, they help us with planting. You know, women uh, in the village, they're the ones who cut trees for, for firewood. Mm. Most women go to the forest to fetch firewood, and with that, we are killing the forest cover each and every day. So with them knowing that if I'm, I'm cutting this tree, I have to plant more. So you see, it's a win-win. They get the firewood they want, and we get to, to replenish the forest cover. Yeah. So having the knowledge you have across um, engineering, you know, um, green camping and all that yeah. how do you think you would use the knowledge you have in helping these women now that they have they have a solution in terms of they have trees mm -hmm. they are already selling as seedlings mm -hmm. they don't go back to cutting trees for firewood because assuming they buy they sell the trees they sell the seedlings but mm -hmm. they don't have enough to cater for maybe buying charcoal or buying greener energy, you know, mm -hmm. uh, f uh, better means of fuel. How would you help them not to be able to go back now and do uh, deforestation? In the mentorships that we do each and every time we engage with them, we not only teach them on, uh, on, on, on planting trees, we diversify. We even go deeper and teach them on modern ways of farming. We teach them on modern ways of uh, tree growing. We teach them on modern ways of actually just getting money. Uh, 
in the in the recent past women used to do a lot of embroidery and selling them then from getting them they they use the money to maybe buy fuel and all that and uh, we're trying to also teach them on how they can generate money by not cutting trees there is so many ways we, uh, in every you know it varies from constituency to constituency on uh, their their strengths so you find if you go to this consist constituency uh, they are planting pyrethrum you go to this other constituency they are planting maybe viazi so we try and uh, bring them back to older modes that the, the the older people used to do and actually bridging it to the the more car the most current methods also so that they can evade so much on cutting trees and basically just embracing other things more than just the the things that they are used in the village yeah so how how successful has has this project been you know in terms of uh, saying that you're doing it across the country um, to um, how successful has the project been in terms of uh, now in one county you're doing pyrethrum, in another one you're doing uh, potatoes, in another one you're doing flowers, you know, assuming. So how successful has this been in terms of ensuring that women, all these women are covered I across all those counties? It has been very successful, but I can say 70% successful. We still have challenges, quite a number of challenges that we are encountering, but 70% of success shows that it is a good thing. So we actually even trying to engage women to, to, to enter into construction with the sense that we need uh, like things like matufari, we need like uh, mawe, ballast that is. So there are women who are able to that uh, to that era or sector where they can go do those uh, excavation of uh, it seems manly but there are some women who can do it and if they can do that why not and I actually wanted to mention a, a certain just to divert Kidogo from engineering and all that there is this field uh, field of sports that women in the recent past have not been so much active in it so uh, we find like there is bodybuilding sports there is uh, athletic sports we've seen nowadays women venturing so much in the in the coach you see uh, an athlete falls out after uh, doing the, the after being done with the tracks and all that they go back home but some come back and become coaches and we know that most coaches are men. Very few coaches are women. But in Kenya at the moment, I would love to applaud a certain lady by the name Caroline Kwambai. Uh, as you're aware, she is the only female starter in Kenya, and I believe maybe across East Africa at the moment. So you find in many countries, uh, you know the starters. Those, the, those people who, when you wanna gun, when you wanna gun athletics, so it is always a man. I don't think you've ever seen a woman doing that. So for the first time in Kenya, we have one person who does that and is a woman. And also in, in extensively time, <laughs> extensively, we can, uh, we've seen bodybuilding sports. Recently in Eldoret, we held one of the major bodybuilding sports and we saw a lot of women thriving in it. Bodybuilding nila kubeba ma machuma. So we've seen so many ladies thriving in it and women embracing uh, uh, what do you call physical fitness and body muscling is quite an awesome thing. So before we come to story of sport <laughs> and bodybuilding and you yes. know my producer is telling me I'm a quite tough guy my story of status. <laughs> But anyway, tell us your social media handles. Uh, my social media handles is underscore A, Instagram, Twitter, 
and uh, Facebook is Honorable Jipchir Shir Sharon. Allah. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, why Honorable? Or is it because of the vying for MCA? Yeah, I changed my hand, uh, my my Facebook during mm -hmm. campaign to push my MCA ship, which I became number two, by the way. I just missed by a single. Ah, you became number two? Yes. Oh, wow. You yeah. missed it by a margin. Don't oh, worry. By a margin. Okay. Yeah. So those are my handles. So um, before we come to an end, almost an end of this conversation, yeah. you've touched something on sports and yes. sports and athletics. You also do sports and athletics for women? Mm, I, I just gym. I go to the gym. <laughs> so you don't I'm have not like an initiative for women, uh, athletics? I normally take part in, in women who, who, who are in sports. Like recently, I was very active in Wazingishu Volleyball Games, which the women really took mm. part and ex exult so nicely in them, yeah. So I just, um, I'm just a cheer and I'm an, ob an observer and I push people. I can't even push you to go and start. <laughs> yeah. What is the position, in your opinion, what is the position of women in this era of technology, politics, and you know, yeah. As much as we've really advanced in technology, we've advanced in, um, we've really advanced in the 21st century, as much as we are here, wherever we are now, we are still, women are still falling behind. I've had people crying for the boy child. They're saying the boy child has been left out, blah, blah, blah. But to be honest, women, we are still behind. We are so much behind since we're still not on the fourth. We need 70% of women on the forefront. By the moment, we just have 30% of women on the limelight. We have 30% of women. The 70% of women are still they are still subjects to others. They are still, they are still shy. I can say that, or they they've not come out. Yeah. So we need. There's a lot of advocacy that needs to be done for the, for that matter. And as if you see the government really advocating for women positions, that's not like enough. We need to do a lot of, I guess, civil civic education also, so that. Women and people in the society need to understand that there are positions for them. It's not that you need to grow up, finish school, get a job, just a well-paying job, get married, have kids, circle continues. There is more to life than that. So a lot of advocacy needs to be done. A lot of mentorship needs to be done. Yeah. What are your um, political ambitions now that you're also in politics? Oh my political ambition since I was a kid I used to tell myself I'll be the president of Kenya 2042 <laughs> but I look forward to to be a great person in this nation a step at a time <laughs> yeah we will know when we reach there <laughs> a step at a time but you will see me more in the limelight yeah how old are you I'm sorry to ask <laughs> no, it's okay I'm 24 oh wow yeah okay I'm old. <laughs> no, your, your knowledge is old. It's okay. Like the knowledge you. I take that as a nice compliment. Yeah, you have you have uh, mm -hmm. you have a vast uh, knowledge, wide, mm -hmm. broad broad knowledge. Um, that came as a by the way when you said when you were talking about about political ambition. So, what okay. are your ambitions uh, when it comes to your civil engineering career? With my civil, car civil engineering career, I look forward to, to really being, uh, 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 doing greater projects in Kenya. I have a company and uh, so far it, it has just done a few supplies. By the moment in 2023, I'm really looking for projects to do. So I look forward to seeing myself doing in the coming financial year. God willing, I hope I'll get a lot of uh, projects to do and with that I can be able to 
Siphon women to come and join me. Sorry, today I'm putting you on the spot a lot. It's okay. <laughs> so the company, yeah, is it what you supply? Tenders, government. What do you do? What do you supply? Uh, so I supply anything, anything that needs to be supplied. Jack of all trades. Yes, but now it is a it is a construction. It is a building construction, road construction slash supplies company whereby uh, I take projects for construction and uh, any construction, be it building or roads. At the same time, I take any supply. I can supply you anything that you want. I can supply schools, whatever they want, stationary, food, building materials, name them. Yeah, it is open for all. So how do you balance now that you've brought in the company aspects, you have a company you're running, you have a civil engineering class you're doing because now you're in school pursuing a degree, you have women you're teaching beekeeping and others you're teaching, uh, you're helping to plant trees. Like how do you just balance all this? Like I said before, just be you and everything falls into place. Just be yourself. Don't, I don't really complicate things. It comes... When it is class time, though I, I have deferred at the moment, I took a break. If when it is class time, it is class time. When it is work, it is work. And since I'm not like employed, employed, I am a freelancer, I have all the time. Wow. Yeah. That's quite strength of a woman. So, yeah. um, off to girl girl chick okay. kind of uh, okay. question mm -hmm. uh, we always love asking every woman who comes here what five things can't miss in your handbag <laughs> <laughs> my handbag a charger earphones uh, i have a charger earphones uh my my what do you call a small perfume. Oh. Um, that that's three. Tissues, definitely. And I always carry a a, a a piece of sanitary towel. You never know who you meet. I think those are the things that are so consistent in my handbag. Oh, okay. So, yeah. are you a heels or a flat person? I'm a flat person. <laughs> 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 Why? Mm. I walk a lot around and being a civil engineer, in fact, today I've tried, I should have come here with uh, my safety boots. Oh. Yeah, because I, I enter so many places and being a forest ventured girl, mm -hmm. so I, I can't do that, those places with gully gully shoes. So I'm a flat girl, flat ah. shoes girl. So. Um, a wallet or a phone? A phone. Why? <laughs> <laughs> my life is my phone. <laughs> Those ones that are married to their phone. Um, I'm married to my phone. You'll, you'll find me online. I think I'm on my phone more than I am with people. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, what's the most used app on your phone? Like, what app do you use frequently? Twitter. Ah. <laughs> Twitter, then uh. Notepad. Yeah, Twitter and Notepad. Twitter and Notepad. Yeah. Okay. Um, are you a morning person or a night owl? Mm, night owl. Why? I think I struggle so much in the morning. I, I'd rather, I'd rather transnight to the morning than wake up and... Thank you. Welcome. Please. <laughs> I was telling I was telling <laughs> I was telling my co-host in the morning that today I was woken up at my alarm rang at four. I was woken up at four thirty. Um I went to shower at five or five. So between four thirty and five or five. I was back timing. So let me ask you another one. Yeah. Um, yeah. um just a game. Okay. Tom? Tom's mother has five sons, mm -hmm. and each son has a sister. So how many sisters does Tom have? 
Tom's mom has a son. Tom's mother yes. has five sons. Five sons. And each son has a sister. Mm -hmm. So, how many sisters does Tom have? Just one. Did you get a more Kenya? No. <laughs> but there are five sons and each, <laughs> each one of them has a sister. They're not five? No. Just one sister. Why? See, it's the same... Uh, it's the same God, case. Is it my mathematics that is not mathematicking or something? There are five mm -hmm. and there is one girl. So each, each, each boy has a sister. So the dominating factor there is a sister. <laughs> I have seen what happened there. Uh, okay, so what is red and white in color? As a mixture or... So as, what is as red? A, Red, yakusoma, and color red, okay. and white in color. What is red and white in color? Uh, like red, I read. Yes. So what is red and white in color? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> a board. The last one. Oh, a board. Okay. <laughs> Before we, we wrap up the entire thing. Okay. So, the last one. What has four legs but can't walk? A bed. <laughs> what has four legs but can't walk? So it's a bed. A Maybe. table. A, even a bed. Okay, yeah. Be there even a bed. Mm. Okay. Oh. Anyway. A table yeah. can have one leg. Good point. Mm -hmm. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got me with that one. Let me admit. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I wish I was I was I was asking Val these questions. So we'll call I, her next. So that I, so that I get <laughs> to harass her. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. Please give us your parting shot. That's your camera. Okay. So just give us your parting anything. shot. Anything. Tell a woman out there, encourage a woman out there who's mm. just figuring out life. And they have watched you this morning and they probably look for a source of inspiration. Okay. So that's your camera. To every person out there, I normally wake up and say give thanks to good, uh, to good health and life. That is the ultimate. Uh, to every woman out there, be bold, be strong, believe in yourself, believe in you, do you, never be swayed. Be, have a, be a person of your own stance and above all join us join us in, in, in teaching each and every woman out there in trying to reach out to every woman out there be a helping hand to each and every woman out there tell them that they can do whatever they want to do regardless of wherever or who they are they can manage they can rise they can fight for whatever they want in this life. It's just a, a step that you need to take by finding what do you want. Then from there, thrive and find a mentor. Always have a mentor and always, always know what you want. Thank you so much for making time Welcome. and for coming. It really means a lot. Thank and you so much. Insights and nuggets of wisdom you've shared with us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All the you. best, All in, the your best you. in your endeavors. Have a so good day. That time. was Sharon Japchirchir, who mm -hmm. is wearing a lot of hats. She is a civil engineer. She is, um, she is doing projects in the community. She is helping women in farming. You know, there's just a whole lot she is doing. But one thing we are taking home today, you can be what you want, you can do what you want, and you can wear a whole lot of hats in male-dominated arenas, even in female-dominated mm -hmm. arenas. Be bold, be courageous, and be strong. That is the strength of a woman.